Hello guys, welcome back to another video. Now we're going to be back working on the N52 powered BMW 130i and we're going to be swapping out the eccentric shaft sensor today. If you have no idea what the eccentric shaft sensor is, it is essentially this little thing here. Now this is genuine VDO or continental. If you are replacing one of these, only go with genuine OEM VDO slash continental or genuine BMW. This really is not a job that you want to be doing more than once. Now to replace the eccentric shaft sensor, we need to remove the rocker cover. So of course we have a new rocker cover gasket. We have new aluminium rocker cover bolts. We have a new eccentric shaft sensor seal. We have a new Valvetronic motor gasket. We have some special high temperature grease for the Valvetronic motor gear. And we have a fresh oil and oil filter. Now, if you are looking to do this job yourself, I will leave links down in the description box below for all of these items that you're going to need. But without further ado, let's get cracking. Okay then, so as you can see, I have the car in the garage now. And I just wanna say, this is not gonna be a complete step-by-step. -step. I have, of course, already replaced the rocker cover gaskets, and I have a full in-depth video already on my channel so if you do want to get to the stage where we are going to be replacing the eccentric shaft sensor i would advise you to go and check out that video it's a very in-depth video it tells you you know exactly which bolt which connector to disconnect and um, yeah that's probably going to be a lot more helpful this is a job that i really need to get onto of course i would love to go through the whole step-by-step -step process again but um, yeah, I just don't have the time. So if you do want to find out how to remove the rocker cover and how to replace all the gaskets and whatever else, go check that video out. There will be a link down in the description box below. But yeah, I'm going to get stuck in, get all of the cowling, all of the plastic covers removed, and then get cracking in removing this rocker cover. Now you may be wondering why I'm actually doing this job. And the reason is I'm getting a couple of codes for the eccentric shaft sensor itself. I believe it's eccentric shaft sensor plausibility and then another one as well. And the reason that I even gave the car a scan to check for codes is because I noticed my fuel economy went right down and we're talking you know i was getting sort of high 20s about 28 29 mpg then it plummeted to where i was only getting around 17 or 18 mpg now not only was i noticing poor mpg but i was also noticing the valve timing was not advancing properly when i was flooring it you usually notice a different difference in the engine tone you know as the as the revs climb above 4000 rpm and I, I, and i wasn't noticing that so yeah i did think there was an issue now essentially what happens is when the variable valve timing detects there is a fault it runs you know as a fail safe basically it just runs off of the throttle body now as standard the throttle body is pretty redundant it just remains completely open and it is the eccentric shaft opening the valves which controls the engine speed but when that system is not working the throttle body you know works as a traditional throttle body and it means that you are essentially going to be using more fuel because it's not quite as good as the variable valve timing system now then let's really get cracking Okay then, so a little update. As you can see, I've removed all of the cowling, the engine cover, also removed all of the wiring from the ECU box, folded that out of the way. That's the biggest thing I can, that's the biggest piece of advice I can give when doing this job. Give yourself as best access as possible. Anything that you can move out the way, move it out of the way because it is quite tight to remove and reinstall the valve cover itself. Now I thought it would be a good idea as well to show you 
the eccentric shaft sensor. So it is this thing here. Now I appreciate the light isn't the best, but in there is pretty much filled with oil. Now I know it's not coming from the top. A lot of people end up spilling the oil and then it ends up running down here. I know that this has broke on the inside and it's letting oil through to the connectors. And as you can see, this is pretty soaked as well. So yeah, this has failed internally and it does need replacing. But at this stage then, what I'm gonna do is go ahead and remove all of the ignition coils and then I'll get this wiring branch out of the way. I'll disconnect the Valvetronic motor, move that out of the way. And, uh, and then yeah, we'll get on to removing the rocker cover itself. Now, one thing I must point out, if you are doing this job yourself, I don't know why a lot of people think you need to do this, but you do not need to touch the injectors. You should be able to gain access to the bolts themselves. I did, you know, I had plenty of room to get down there last time, but you do not need to disconnect the fuel rail or anything like that. So just leave that well alone. There's no need to move that out of the way. Another little update then. I'm pretty sure we are ready to start undoing the rocker cover bolts. So as you can see, all of the wiring is now over to that side. So I disconnected the thermostat water pump and this branch here and folded everything all over and out of the way. Now as you can see, I now have clear access to get this thing removed. Now, probably a thing that you do want to take care with is this crankcase ventilation pipe here. Now this is a new genuine BMW part. I pretty much replaced this about six months ago along with the rest of the CCV system. So it did come off a bit easier, but you just need to be careful because this can be pretty brittle. But yeah, I managed to get it disconnected without too many issues. So yeah, I think we're ready to start undoing the bolts for the rocker cover now. Okay, so there is the valve cover now removed along with the gasket. Just gonna remove the spark plug tube gasket as well. So then, as you can see, the rocker cover itself has now been removed and obviously I need to remove the eccentric shaft sensor itself. Next, it's just held in by, looks like three 10 millimeter bolts. Before I do that, I'm just going to give everything a good inspection just to make sure we don't have any issues and give everything a good clean up as well. Now then, it's time to remove the eccentric shaft sensor itself. Now for the top two bolts, you're going to have to get a wrench down in there. I'm going to use this ratchet spanner. Make sure we have it on the correct way. I want to go ahead and crack these loose. There we are. go and then for the bottom bolt there is a hole in the timing chain guide so you can insert a socket through there there we are that's cracked loose now we need to be very very careful you can't remove these all the way because of course we don't want to drop them down into the engine so we need to remove them just far enough so that they have removed from the head but not far enough so that they remove from the sensor itself. Okay, so I managed to get all three of the bolts backed out just enough to get it out of the cylinder head itself, but they're still in the sensor. So I should be able to lift this out now. Just be very careful. You don't want any of these bolts to fall out. Ah, there we go. Sorted that is the original eccentric shaft sensor now removed. And yeah, it doesn't really look the best, does it? This is the original, I believe. It's got a BMW part number on Siemens VDO. Of course, VDO is owned by Continental now, I believe. But yeah. 
doesn't look the best does it let's just compare it to a nice shiny new part so you can see exact same part just that this is a continental video part and this is Siemens video part I believe this did actually have a BMW part number on but it looks like it's been scratched out so I guess they can sell their own then yep exactly the same part so the new eccentric shaft sensor is now in place I've just got to tighten down the bolts now all three of the bolts are supposed to be torqued down to 10 newton meters now the bottom one we can do that with a socket of course so I'll do that one first Is that one done and then the top two bolts I'm going to attempt to get with this crow's foot attachment there's one and there's two I've also went ahead and applied some of this Castrol high temperature grease to the Valvetronic gear as per BMW's recommendation. Okay, so it's now time to install the new rocker cover gasket and then we can get the rocker cover itself reinstalled. And now with the rocker cover gaskets both in place, let's get the rocker cover itself installed. I've gave it a bit of a clean up, but there's no point in going too crazy. You could spend all day cleaning this up, but yeah, I'm more than happy with that now. I've already went ahead and replaced the eccentric shaft sensor seal so that is nice and tight in there now but yeah let's just get this installed back onto the engine so rocker cover is now back in place seated exactly where it should be let's go ahead and install the new aluminium bolts so the new aluminium bolts are in place i've already went ahead and torqued them down if you're wondering what they're talking sequences essentially torque them all down to seven newton meters start from the inside and spiral your way outwards so seven newton meters on all of the bolts and then an additional 90 degrees around half an hour later after you've let the bolt settle but with the rocker cover now firmly in place i'm going to go ahead and put everything back as it should be and then we'll check back in okay then so i'm pretty sure we are now back together to the point that we can start the thing i have got the battery on charge just because it is a little bit low i've already went ahead and bled the coolant obviously topped it up to the max already bled that up and i've also went ahead and relearned the valvetronic limit positions as well so that is now all done so I guess it's now time to get this thing fired up. So if you're wondering what that smoke is there, it's just a little bit of oil that's stripped down onto the exhaust manifold. Nothing to worry about. That'll burn off in a matter of seconds. Seems to be running fine though, can't see any leaks. So as you can see then, everything is now back together and the engine is running sweet. Absolutely spot on now. Now I'm going to wrap this job up then. I have already taken the car for a test drive. It drives spot on now. The valve timing seems to be advancing as it should. I've gave the car a scan with ISTA as well. No more error codes. So that's perfect. Okay then, so there we go. The eccentric shaft sensor has been replaced. And honestly, it's a completely different car now. It drives so much better. And I should start to see the MPG 
increasing quite a bit as well like i said before i was only averaging about 16 to 17 mpg whereas when my car was working properly it was closer to 30 mpg on average so yeah i should start to see that increasing uh pretty soon um but yeah i'm happy that it's all done now everything was um pretty simple and straightforward like i said i've pretty much done this job once before if you do want to see a complete detailed how to uh, remove the rocker cover and replace the gaskets and all the rest of it then like i said there will be a link down in the description box below i really didn't see the point in making the same video twice obviously i did go into depth with regards to installing the eccentric shaft sensor itself but from there on in it's pretty much the same as you know doing a valve cover job anyway so yeah we got it done anyway like i said no uh, real hiccups um if i had to say how long it took obviously it takes longer when you're trying to record things um but if i was to do it just from start to finish i would say i could get it done in I would say three to four hours that's including you know cleaning and things like that you know really going the extra step but yeah i would say three to four hours you know this isn't a job that's going to take you uh, a few days once you know what you need to do once you can gain access and that's the best piece of advice that i can give is make sure that you have as best access as possible you know don't try and remove the valve cover with all of the wiring harness in the way you're just making life difficult for yourself get all that stripped back out of the way and um, it's just going to make your life so much easier but anyway that is me done for now hopefully you guys have enjoyed this video please give it a like leave a comment down below subscribe if you have not already done so and i'll see you all in that next one peace